Hi, and welcome to the Boat Princess podcast. My name is Nikki Vo, and I'm your host. I am a boat owner, a marina owner, a director on the Marina Industries Association, and a huge advocate for boating. In this series, I'm sharing the stories from every nook of the boating industry with the intention of encouraging more women to join me and for more women to get behind the helm too. I want to share the experience and opportunities of boating, of the boating industry, and I want you to join me as I bring the conversations and answer all the questions you've had. Boating is not just for the glamorous and rich and famous. It's full of beautiful and interesting people making the most of our natural environment and getting out there, enjoying the waterways. So let's set off the lines, take over the helm and escape to the world of boating. So hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Boat Princess podcast. Today I'm going to share some of my knowledge with you. As you know, as a marina's owner and boat owner, I like to share with you some of my knowledge to enhance your boating lifestyle or perhaps encourage you into that boating lifestyle or being part of the boating industry. So today we're going to talk about choosing a marina for your boat and potentially choosing a marina for you as an employee as well. Some These are some things you should look out for um, as that as well. So first up, marina location. When you're looking for a marina for your boat, the first thing you need to think about is whether you want that marina to be in a location that is close to home or whether it's in a location where you want to go boating. Um, They are two completely different things and it depends how you approach your boat, whether you're intending to just pop out on your boat for a few hours, then you need something close to home. If you're intending it to be a true weekender, a true escape, then why not, like your holiday home, have it um, a certain distance from home, not necessarily a long way, but a certain amount so that you can get to a boating location you want to that is perhaps quieter, more relaxed, uh, more to explore, more things to see, more locations to go to on your boat. So that's the first decision you have to make in choosing a marina. The next is the location of that marina in terms of um, its peacefulness or its ease of birthing. Now, when you're new to boating, the last thing you want to do is pick a marina that has high wind, lots of boat traffic going past all the time, high current, um, very differing tides. That's going to make birthing for you very, very much harder and um, something you don't want to do when you first have a boat. So look for a marina which is very sheltered, um, perhaps has hills around it to shelter it from the wind, or it has a short fetch, fetch being the um, distance across the water to the marina in terms of wind, Um, somewhere that that doesn't have lots of boat traffic going past. So you're you're not going to want a marina right near a, a ferry location or something like that if this is your first experience in boating. Once you're an experienced boater, all those things you'll be able to cope with easily. But as a new boater, it is important that you pick a marina that is as sheltered and uh, has lovely wide fairways for you to berth in. You don't want tight fairways where it's going to be tricky to berth your boat and so on. So check all of those items out when you look for a marina. Always go and visit a marina before you decide on having that marina for your boat. You will, the brochure could be completely different to the actual location. So go and have a look at it and make sure that those fairways really are as wide as you think they are um, and that it is as sheltered as you think it is and so on and so forth. Tides and current are very important as well. The current can affect your berthing quite dramatically and the tides can affect whether you can lose your boat or not. If it's in a strong tidal area, and the tide actually goes down dramatically, which means you can't actually get your boat out of the berth because there are 
um, places you have to go through where you don't have enough depth for your boat, then obviously that's going to restrict the times you can take your boat out and the times you can bring your boat back. So make sure that you check the tidal access of that marina. Next up is hard stand. Quite a lot of marinas these days don't actually have a hard stand. They're just a purely boat storage venue. Now, the issue with that is that maintaining your boat is a little harder. Now, boats need things done to them a lot of the time. They need looking after, they need regular maintenance, they need anti-fouling. And if you don't have um, a hard stand where your marina is, the issue is that you either have to take your boat to another hard stand, which is obviously going to cost you time and fuel, um, or you have to pay contractors to come to your boat and they're going to charge you money for doing that as well. Um, every boat that lives in the water is going to need an annual anti-foul. So if you don't have a hard stand at the marina you're at, you're going to have to take your boat once a year at least somewhere else to get it anti-fouled. So that is a big, big consideration when choosing a marina. The next thing is dock masters. Dock masters are members of staff that um, they do things like they walk around the marina and they check your boat isn't sinking. <laughs> they also um, help you come into the berth by throwing you a line if you need them to. Um, they'll serve you with fuel and they look after that marina continuously. So they're repairing that marina, they're cleaning that marina, um, they're keeping your marina facility at its optimum. So if there aren't dock masters at the marina that you visit, um, I would be a little more cautious that um, those sort of services are potentially not there for you. Other items include how far are the shops from the marina? Can you pick up a few things on your way to the marina? Um, are there restaurants nearby or is there a restaurant or cafe at the marina itself? Obviously, it's lovely to add that to your boating lifestyle when you head down to the marina that you actually pick up a coffee before you hop on the boat or maybe they can do some catering for you um, or maybe um, when friends come along they've forgotten to bring something with them so they can pop in and pick up a bottle of wine to bring on board those sorts of things so think about um, again whether the marina has that sort of facility and therefore um, if that adds to the lifestyle of the boating there for you. Next up, we've got security. Now, security is often provided these days at marinas in the form of cameras. Um, some marinas still provide um, people overnight as security, and that is an added bonus, obviously, because um, they can keep an eye of, on what's going on at the marina. The cameras do as well, but you know, having somebody actually on site if you're staying overnight on the marina and something happens um, and there is somebody here that can help you, then fantastic, you know. So security is one to look at. Make sure it absolutely minimum has cameras um, and a security system set up and things like, you know, is, is there a gated access to the entire marina or is there gated access to the arms? How is that dealt with to keep your property safer uh, when you're not there. The team at the marina are incredibly important to your lifestyle in boating. When you go to that marina to have a look at it, how are you greeted? Is it friendly? Is it warm? Um, is it knowledgeable? Um, the team at a marina should be experienced knowledgeable and willing to share that knowledge with you. So if you have a problem with your boat, if the people at the marina are the first point of contact to say, oh, this has gone wrong, who can I talk to about it? They will either know what 
you need to do to your boat or they can hand you to the right expert that can. And again, that comes back to um, whether there are contractors on site at the marina or tenants on site at the marina that have those skills to assist with whatever needs fixing on your boat. Um, obviously, if there are tenants on site, they can literally go down to your boat and fix that item without you even being involved. They can just get it done, send you the bill, you pay the bill, happy days. It's all done, finished. Next time you get on the boat, it's ready to go. So the marina staff look at their website, look at their people that they have on their team, what their experience is. Um, and and find out a little bit more about them if you can. It makes a big, big difference to your boating lifestyle if the marina team have knowledge that they can share with you and that they're willing to do that. Next up is the community at the marina. When you get a walk around that marina, you get a feel for the people that have their boats there. Um, also see if there's any events going on or social um, sort of gatherings that occur at the marina. Some of them have um, you know, barbecues every now and then to keep their clients um, engaged um, and and able to meet each other. Um, some of them have um, at our um, Bob and Head Marina, we have an Empire Gals group, which is specifically targeted to the women at the marina to keep um, them engaged and entertained um, and things like boat licenses for women only, that sort of thing. Um, so look at how the community feels at that marina because it can become like a second village for you, um, a sort of space where you have a whole bunch of friends and you enjoy going to the marina, not just because it's where your boat is, but where your your boating friends are as well. So that's a very important part of the marina. This one's obvious, but um, obviously I need to point it out to you, is the facil facilities that are there at the marina. So that includes things like the laundry, if they have Wi-Fi, um, if there's um, maybe an office space you can use just to sit down and do some work if you need to, if you don't want to on the boat. Again, if there's a cafe or restaurant there, um, showers that are there, bathrooms, um, what, what elements are going to make your boating lifestyle easier? Um, Check all of that out and check out the quality of it. So look at the laundry, look at the bathroom, see what level of, of cleanliness they are, how they're maintained and so on and so forth. That's really important. Also, when you're checking out the facilities at the marina, check out basic requirements you're going to need on your boat. So obviously water and power at the berth itself are very important, not only for washing down the boat, but also filling your water tank on the boat. And of course, the power you need for when you are in the berth to use your 240 volt items and also because you can't run the generator in the um, marina and also um charging your batteries. Um, plugging into the marina is an advantage of being in a marina berth in that you constantly um, charge your batteries so that when you get to your boat, it's good and ready to start up and go. Um, fuel and ice are also incredibly important elements that you will need on your boat. Um, so having them at the marina also is a huge asset for um, your boating lifestyle. Next is value. Now you will find a huge difference in the pricing of marinas. For example, a, a marina on Sydney Harbour is going to be a great deal more than one that is on Pitwater or Broken Bay or Hawkesbury, so on and so forth, in Sydney, as an example. And yet um, getting to those marinas could be just as easy from your location. Um, so look at driving to that marina and how long it takes you and where that marina gets you to in terms of boating um, will maybe make a big difference and the price can be massively different so don't assume that just because you make an inquiry at a marina on the harbour that boating 
as a pastime is out of your reach because of the berthing price on Sydney Harbour. Inquire about other marinas further up the coast, on Broken Bay, on Pittwater, and you'll find they're literally half. So um, it's worth looking that, at that because you might spend a little bit more on the boat and less on the berthing, or you might get a smaller boat because of it, or you might get a bigger boat because you've got a bit boat outside of Sydney Harbour as opposed to in Sydney Harbour. So obviously I'm using um, local examples there, but that will be the case all over the world. There will be some marinas that are expensive and some marinas that are incredibly reasonable. So don't just make your investigations about owning a boat based on one marina location and price. Investigate other options. And, of course, there is things like... um, dry stack storage you don't have to have an uh, be in a wet berth marina you can actually have dry stack storage for smaller boats as well and that again makes a massive difference in the cost of keeping your boat now when you're looking at value and affordability of the marina really don't just work on the price of a marina really compare apples for apples What are the facilities at the marina in comparison to the price it's charging against other marinas around it? Um, Is the quality and cleanliness and um, service at the marina you're looking at incredibly higher, but the price is just a little bit higher? You get what you pay for in marinas. So if they are charging um, a reasonable amount, Um, and you're looking at it and thinking, wow, this one's got great service, security, hard stand facilities, so on and so forth, and it's only $2 a foot more than the one around the corner that doesn't, then you are going to save that $2 a foot time and time over with your contractors and your, um, your, your lifestyle of boating there. So that's really important. Also, when you're looking at buying a boat, please, please, please check that there are berths available in the area that you wish to boat in before you lock into the purchase of a boat. Obviously, there's no point in having a 70-foot boat um, if you've got nowhere to keep it. So please go and inquire at the marinas before you lock into the purchase of a certain size of vessel and make sure there is somewhere you can actually keep that boat. That is really important. And that is also something to consider when choosing the marina for your boat. Can their hard stand lift your boat or are you going to have to take it elsewhere or their their slipway, their hard stand or slipway? Can they lift your boat or are you going to have to take it elsewhere for work and what is that going to cost you to do that in terms of fuel and time as well. Uh, Check out the condition of the marina. Again, this is why you need to do the tour. Um, You need to see how clean that marina is. What does it smell like? Um, Look at the number of cleats available for you to tie up to. Um, The less the quality of the marina, the less the number of cleats. Um, the uh, are there arms between the boats or is it just um, pull up to rear as it is in many European marinas um, and no arms between the boats? You've just got to rely on fenders between each other um, and you've always got to get on, onto your boat from the rear as opposed to the side, which, um, and that would be interesting for what sort of boat, more, more classical boats are harder to get onto from the back and often will need Um, steps up the side to get onto. So that's other things to consider, especially in relation to the type of boat that you're going to have. Um, But yeah, the condition of the marina. So for example, is there a a berth that looks really untidy and and the edges around it are really broken up? Has somebody bashed into that and nobody's repaired it? Um, So look at those things and make sure that everything is repaired well. That the, the the marina feels very solid when you walk down it or does it, you know, are you moving all over the place as you're walking down it because it's a very what we call light system. So it's um, 
it's not coping with the wave effect that is around it um, and not solid concrete floating marina. Is it floating or is it non-floating marina? So obviously a non-floating marina, your boat is going to move with the tide. A floating marina, the whole marina moves with the tide. So that is all obviously a much easier marina to be at as well if it is a floating system. We've talked about contractors on site. Let's talk specifically about the types of contractors on site. For easy maintenance, there should be at least a mechanic, electrician, shipwright. And in addition to that, there should be really trimmer, painter, broker and detailer. Think about if they're not there. Um, the costs of time, inconvenience and fuel for you to take your boat elsewhere for those services. And if you can get contractors to come to the marina, what are those contractors going to charge you to do that? So if they're an hour's drive away, they're going to charge you two hours extra for every service they provide to you um, to do that work on your boat and then potentially they're going to have to travel there find out what the cause is then travel back again and then go back again and fix it when they've got the parts so you could be looking for four six eight hours extra work depending on how many times they have to go back and forth to that location and if it's an extensive job that will be days and days and days of extra charges so be mindful of that um, when you are looking at a marina that does not have services on site. What's the parking like? Is there parking nearby or is there parking on the location? Is that going to cost you a lot of money? Is there limited parking on an hourly basis in that area? Are you therefore going to have to get a taxi or an Uber every time you go to the marina? Those are all costs you need to consider and the feasibility of getting all your gear to the boat are there really good trolleys at the marina that you take from the car park to the boats how many trolleys are there are they really limited or is there a decent amount there for everybody to use are they good quality trolleys with good capacity those are all things that you need to consider about when you go on your boat whether it's yours a share boat a friend's boat whatever it is you're going to be taking a whole bunch of gear down to that boat so Trolleys and proximity of car parking is very important. Insurance. A good operating marina will ask you for third party um, insurance to be an absolute requirement of their agreement with you. So you will have to have third party insurance on your vessel such that if anything happens, you hit somebody else's boat in the marina or you hit the marina and you damage it, um, you can claim on that insurance and they can therefore be compensated as the third party. Um, if the marina doesn't ask this of you, then obviously it's going to be harder for you if somebody hits your boat. So be mindful of that. Check that they are asking for that. Is It is normally an absolute requirement of your agreement contract with them. Emergency equipment, again, on the insurance side, check out all the emergency equipment around the marina. Is it up to date? Is it tidy? Is it clean? Um, do they have a system where they check it regularly? Is the proximity of the emergency equipment good to you? Um, so that you know that if something does go wrong, then the marina response is going to be quick, effective, and um, with as much reduced damage as possible. So check out the emergency equipment. And finally, um, environmental practices around the marina. This is an important part of our world now and something that marinas need to uh, start working on if they haven't already and consider. Um, and if you are a conscious person trying to do the right thing by the environment, then this is important to you as well to check out. So 
A um, couple of things you can look out for is, um, is the marina using solar power? Are they um, using natural resources to provide them with power across the marina or the marina buildings? Um, is the hard stand a hard stand versus a slipway? There is a big difference on the environmental impact of a hard stand versus a slop, slipway, and that is when um, work is done on a hard stand, all of the um, residue from antifouls and so on and so forth is collected in a system. It is environmentally um, treated and the baddies are kept out of the water basically, whereas with a slipway um, they had have certain techniques they can use in terms of sandbags and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, some of the work they are doing is going to go back into the water and is going to infect the environment of the water around you. So um, hard stands, they make a huge effort to keep it as environmentally conscious as possible and keep all of their work um, not affecting the water and the air around them. When you see um, hard stand operations, check when they're whether they are, you know, when they're painting, are they tenting up those those boats and therefore the paint isn't going into the atmosphere, or are they not? So also look at um, are they using lots of plastic? Are they allowing balloons to be on the marina? All those sorts of things. Those affect. Um, our environment overall. So they're important things to look at when you're looking at a marina. So I hope that has been of use to you all. There are some fantastic resources to use for this. There was a great article recently in Nautilus magazine in the December, January uh, edition, which was about choosing the right marina. Um, obviously, Marina Industries Association, um, their grading of marinas with their gold anchor system is something to look out for as well. At Empire Marina Bomb and Head, we are a five gold anchor marina, and that says a lot about how we maintain the level of experience we have, um, the environmental impact we have, and so much more. Um, there's also things to, again, on the environment take look out for fish friendly marinas which is another marina industries association accreditation and um there is um lots to look out for when picking a marina there's a little video that we have on youtube the empire marinas has done by our marina director that tells you a little bit about choosing a marina as well if you'd like to see to see a video version um, and of course you can sign up for my newsletter on theboatprincess.com and I have no doubt at some point I will produce a blog on this subject. So it's been lovely talking to you again this morning. Thank you for your ears. I truly appreciate them. I do have something very exciting to share with you. I am holding an event on Saturday the 12th of March. It will be a four-hour cruise on Sydney Harbour with champagne and a grazing catered lunch. Um, it's only four 34 guests so it's a very um, exclusive event for those who would like to enjoy it and uh, we shall be cruising the harbour we shall be talking all things women boating but also um, exploring blue mind you will actually get to experience blue mind because you'll be on a boat and enjoying that lovely feeling that is being on a luxurious vessel. Prometheus is the boat that we sh shall be on board, thanks to our friends at Exclusive Hire. And the ticket price for that is $349 per person, and that includes um, the catered lunch, champagne and soft drinks, and a whole bunch of amazing, wonderful women that you'll get to meet, network with, and have a great time with on a beautiful, beautiful, stunning black boat. 
out on the water. She is absolutely gorgeous. So I am looking forward to meeting you all at that event. To get tickets for that, simply go to my website at theboatprincess.com or follow me on Instagram and you'll find a link on that as well at The Boat Princess. I look forward to seeing you on the water soon.